In this photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a fashion shoot where I create this beautiful sunset ambiance, even though it's a cloudy day. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And as you know, the weather does not always cooperate with your vision. And so in preparation for this shoot, I had envisioned something that was warm, uh, bright sunlight coming in through the windows. And we showed up to the location and it was a cloudy day. So in this photo deconstruction, I want to show you how I created this really warm, beautiful sunset vibe, even when the sun wasn't out at all. This location is absolutely stunning. And this is actually where we shoot for the third day of my fashion intensive workshop. Now in this workshop, the first day we do beauty photography, the second day we do fashion photography, and the third day we go on location. This is not only giving you the opportunity for hands-on shooting, but we also talk about business and technique, retouching and more. And so I absolutely love this location because not only is it stunning, but there's so many ways to transform it. And so I wanna show you how I transformed this beautiful setting into something that looks like sunset. Now, the inspiration for this lighting was actually from photographer Mark Seliger. A few years ago, he did an Oscars photo booth where it looked as though there was beautiful sunset light coming through a window, but the window was a set. There was no sun. And so I wanted to emulate that feel. With that being said, let's take a look behind the scenes. All right, this is what it looks like inside the room of this beautiful mansion. I love all of the detail and the beautiful windows, but it is cloudy outside. There was no light coming in through the windows at all. And so what you can see over on the right hand side of the frame is I have a large umbrella with diffusion, but it's pointed away from my subject. It's not even lighting my subject. In fact, it is bouncing into a wall just a couple of feet, maybe four or five feet behind camera. The reason I did that is I was thinking in, in sunset light, but realistically light coming in through the window, there wouldn't be a light behind the subject as well as on her face it would be light coming in from behind her then bouncing around the room and illuminating her face. And so I really wanted something that felt realistic. So for that reason, bouncing this umbrella into the wall is equivalent of just kicking light around the space. It'll give me something that's much more natural and very, very soft. So that is my first light. There's one more light into this scene. And it's actually out the window behind the subject. So you see that light that looks like sunlight? It's not. What it is, it's a bare head with a CTO. CTO stands for color temperature orange. In other words, it takes a daylight balance strobe and warms it up and makes it tungsten. But that's what's going to give us the feeling of sunset. That's what's going to warm up the light. Now, if that light is very strong, it'll believably be the sun, but if it's very strong, it's also going to bounce into the room around the space and warm up the room without me even having to change the white balance. Now I'm gonna show you another shot of this. So this is actually from outside. So you can kind of tell it's not sunny at all. Uh, what we're getting is we have this bare head with the CTO and it's pointed back through the window. We're actually running the cord out the door behind the subject. I have it pointed in on purpose directly behind my subject. Now before we pop over and see what I captured, I wanna talk a little bit about my choices of camera and lens. So for this shot, I was using the Canon R5, my go-to mirrorless camera, love this camera. I was also shooting with the 24 to 72.8. Now the reason I chose this is I'm very often shooting with a 24 to 105. I love the versatility, but it's only a 4.0 lens. One of the ways that you can fake natural light is by shooting at a narrower depth of field. It just gives the feeling that you are shooting within your environment, working with the light that's there. So 2.8 will not only soften the background, but give a more realistic feel to the scene. So that is why I switched over to the 24 to 70, even though the 105 is more often my go-to. Okay, so envision what you think the shot looks like, right? You've got the warm sunset light coming in over the shoulder, then a little bit of bounce light off the wall filling in around. So this is what the end shot looked like. Incredibly soft light on her face, that beautiful sunset light coming in through the window. And by the way, the light over the shoulder, it is overexposed. That is a super bright hot spot, but I did that on purpose because I want it to look realistic. Sunset. If the light's directly in camera, it wouldn't be correctly exposed. You wouldn't see detail there. Uh, but do you see how much it glows? That's because I've added something called a Black Pro Mist. A Black Pro Mist, this one was a Tiffin one half stop. What it does is it takes highlights and it makes it glow. It makes it bloom. And so you can see that around the highlight on the light coming in through the doorway. Furthermore, it smooths out some of the light on the skin. It just softens the entire scene. So this is what the end shot looked like, but let's see what we're working with in camera. To be honest, it's not too far off. It's, it's 
quite beautiful already. You can see that the light is warm and that is because that light coming in through the window is bouncing around everywhere. So even without a warmer white balance, it is going to warm up my scene. Uh, but some of the things that I noticed that I thought I could fix is because I had the black pro mist on and because it's so heavily backlit, the shot is a little soft. It's not out of focus soft. It's just, it lacks some clarity. It lacks a little bit of contrast. So I knew already that one of the things I wanted to do is add that clarity, add that contrast in post, maybe warm it up a little bit. And then I think I could probably brighten up her face a tiny bit. Now, other things for retouching. Um, the way that I have her laying, uh, it's really beautiful. I love the curves it creates. It's very natural. She's looking out the window. Uh, but I think her chest on the right-hand side is a little bright. Plus, it's a little bit too revealing for what I was going for. So I'm probably going to lift that up, darken her chest, uh, and then maybe create a little bit more uh, contrast on the face. So here's what I captured in camera. And then this is what I did with a raw processor. So you can see, basically, all I really did is add a little bit more clarity, maybe a tiny bit more warmth, and a little bit more contrast. But when I did that, it made the chest look even brighter. And so I knew that's something that I was going to have to fix. A couple other things is, do you see this little bun sticking out of the bottom beneath her ear next to her neck? I think it's messing up my clean lines, so that's something I want to fix as well, as well as some of the little bit of uh, hair sticking out. And so this is what I did in Photoshop. You see that I lifted the top, I evened out the tone of the legs, I thought the legs looked a little dark, and then just cleaned everything up. I also didn't like the seam in the far left of the frame, so I just cleaned that up and darkened it down. So here's what we captured in camera, and then here's where I took it to in post. It's really similar, but I just made little changes to focus the eye back to the subject, just to perfect everything. Now I want to show you one variation of this shot. What I loved about this setup is that the light is so broad. It's not precise. It's not really slices of light, which is what I do so often. The reason it's, it's so broad or one of the benefits of it is I can move my subject around the space. This was likely one of the benefits that Mark Seliger had when he was lighting uh, in that set is because it is much like sunset coming in. You have a lot of flexibility so you can move subjects around the space without having to make dramatic adjustments to the lighting or to the exposure, which if you only have a couple of minutes with each subject is going to be really important. So, without changing a single thing, I took the subject from laying here on the, ca the chaise, on this couch, and then I took her to the left-hand side of the couch and laid her on the floor. So here's what that shot looks like. And the lighting is still gorgeous, and I didn't make any changes. So this is what it looked like as the final image. Here's what it looked like straight out of camera. So I was, again, lacking contrast. I wanted a little bit more clarity to the shot. I wanted her face to be a little brighter. And you can also tell do you see how her shoulder is glowing here? Anytime there's a bright highlight with a black pro mist, it's going to make it bloom, even on highlights on the shoulder or the hair or really any bright highlight in the space. But this is great because she was, you know, five, six, seven feet to the right and higher up in the previous shot, but this is also beautifully lit. So ton of flexibility. So what I did in Capture One is I increased the contrast, I brightened up her face, I warmed up the exposure overall, and then here's what I did in Photoshop. I straightened out the image and smoothed out some of the detail on her skin. Now I didn't have to brighten it up this much. I could have gone with something more subtle. Uh, notice that beautiful highlight on her shoulder again. So I just wanted to show you the flexibility that I have to move her around this space, which I think is, is really, really important if you need to get a lot of shots quickly. Going back to the original shot, you'll also see that this one's a little more subtle, not, not quite as bright on her face, which takes me to the point of there's no right or wrong way to post-process. It depends on your intention. So which one do you like better? Do you like it where it's a little brighter, a little more high contrast, or do you like it where it is a little bit more painterly? I think I lean towards this painterly approach, but both of them are correctly exposed, correctly processed. It all comes down to intention and what you're trying to achieve. If you love this shot and you'd love to know how to do this or to be able to capture this image, I welcome you to join me at one of my fashion intensive workshops. I usually post them on my website a year in advance because they sell out quickly. Plus it gives you time to save and plan ahead. So if you want to see that and see the next dates that I have planned, check out learnwithlindsay.com. If you want to see the gear used to make these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction and you love to see the entire creative process from start to finish, you'll definitely want to like and subscribe. See you next time guys.